Okay, this is topic 12, limits of trig functions. Now, this three special trig limits, I'm going to need you to memorize them, all right? They will be on a quiz, on or test, from now on until the end of the class. So make sure you remember those. All right, we're going to start off with example one. Now, from the last lesson, we know that the first thing you always do when you're trying to find a limit is to plug it in, all right? So in this case, if we plug in pi for x, we have this is equal to the limit, well, this is equal to the tangent of pi, right? And the tangent of pi is zero. Now, while I'm on here, I, I want to remind you that I need you to remember these from last year. So if you don't remember all your um, unit circle, then you need to do so as soon as possible. And I'm going to make sure and quiz you and test you to make sure that you do do it, okay? Now, on the next one, same thing. We're going to start off by plugging in. That's the first thing we'll always try. So we have cosine of 5 pi over 3. Now, the first thing to remember is that 5 pi over 3 is in quadrant 4. So that means that the cosine is going to be positive. And now, what you can do, even though you don't have to, is that for me, for example, I have to use a triangle and I remember the 30, 60, 90 degree triangle. Okay, and I remember the following. I remember that this is, I remember that this is one, this is the square root of three, and this is two. Okay? And I also remember Sokotoa. All right, so for example, now that I know that this is in quadrant four, so this is gonna be similar to pi over three. So the cosine of that is adjacent. The adjacent side is one. The hypotenuse is 2, so the answer is going to be 1 over 2. All right, now, on tangent x over x, the first thing we should try to do is plug in an x, sorry, plug in a 0 for x, but notice that you're going to have a 0 in the denominator, so this is going to yield an indeterminate. And when you do that, we're going to have to uh, play around with this and use some special limits, the special limits that we have above here, okay? Sometimes. Now, the first thing we can do is that we can say that tangent x is equal to the sine of x over the cosine of x, and you're dividing all of this by x. So now I'm going to rewrite this, all right? So if I have the limit as x goes to 0 of sine of x over cosine x times 1 over x, notice that I just rewrote this. Instead of dividing by x, I said that I can multiply by 1 over x. So what I can do also, the limit as x goes to 0, is because I'm multiplying here, I can switch the order of things in the bottom, right? And that's what I will do. So I'm going to have the sine of x over x times 1 over cosine x. All right, so notice, please, that at that point, I'm going to have all I've done so far, excuse me, is I switch the x and the cosine, but this and this, I haven't actually added anything, I just rearranged things. All right, so notice that this right here, sine of x over x is one. Now, how do I know that? Well, because I memorized this. The limit as x goes to zero, sine of x over x is one. All right, so this right here, it's gonna be one. And also, when you plug in a 0 here, the cosine of 0 is also 1. All right, so this is 1. That's 1. So the answer to this limit is 1. Okay? Now, on the next one, the limit of sine 4x over x, the thing that we can do here is we can write this. Well, let me rewrite this over here. We can write that as 4 over 4 times the sine of 4x over x. And it may not be clear why I'm doing this, but you'll see. All right, so if I write it like this, notice that I cannot factor this 4. I cannot, so I have to leave that 4 where it's at, okay? So all I've done so far is multiplying times 1, written as 4 over 4. And then now I'm going to rearrange this where I have the limit as x goes to 0 of 4 times sine of 4x over 4x, okay? And at that moment, you might be thinking, well, why, is, why does that even matter? All right. Well, it turns out that the sine of 4x, excuse me, the limit as x goes to 0 
of sine of 4x over 4x is also is the same thing as the sine of x over x, which is 1. All right, so all of this becomes 1. And at that point, I'm going to have 4 times 1, which is 4. So again, sine of 4x over 4x is the same kind of limit. It's approaching the same y value. Okay, so it's the same. Now, finally, on example 5, you can do this two ways. You can say, well, this is the difference of squares which you can, or you can say, use your trig identities and say that cosine square x minus 1 is the same thing as negative sine square x over x. Right? And if that's the case, then I can rewrite this. Uh, let me see, I'm going to write this as the limit as x goes to 0 of negative sine x times sine x all of that over x, which I can rewrite it like that, okay? And if I look at my special trig limits, this is going to be 1. Now, if I plug in the 0, the sine of 0 is 0. So all of this becomes a 0. So I got 0 times 1, which is 0. Okay, so again, remember, you got to remember all your trig. Uh, I hope this helped. Uh, this can be difficult, but if you have any questions, please let me know.